1980s, I was a human rights lawyer in Canada. Then I moved to Australia, where I was a law professor and an administrative judge doing refugee appeals. In 2006, I moved to France, where I live now. And six or seven years ago, the Dean of Law, where I taught in Sydney, um, and I started to do some research about the persecution of lawyers. We were astounded by the level of persecution in so many countries around the world. So we decided to launch our monitoring committee to start a blog and to actively campaign to, to protect persecuted lawyers around the world. In the case of Turkey, what we do is we collect reports about individual cases of persecution, which we report on Facebook, Twitter, our blog. We network with bar associations, law societies, human rights organizations, NGOs, uh, United Nations, and so on, to try to draw public attention to these particular uh, atrocities. Since 2016, about 1,600 lawyers have been detained and prosecuted. More than 600 have been arrested. About 440 have been convicted. We don't have exact figures for the number of lawyers term in detention, but they've also been subjected to harassment, threats, surveillance, unfair trials, harsh sentences, disbarment. Some have been forced into exile, uh, tortured, and some have even been assassinated. They simply do their job as lawyers. These lawyers bravely take on these cases. So to quell dissent and stop peaceful protests, the government tries to eliminate those lawyers who can take on human rights cases. As we all know, especially now in the era of COVID, fear is a tremendous deterrent, and the Turkish government hopes to prevent lawyers taking on human rights cases to further instill fear in human rights defenders to not take action. The judiciary has also been under attack by the Turkish authorities since the failed so-called coup of 2016. In July of that year, 2,700 Turkish judges were dismissed and some were detained. Now, today, about a half of Turkish judges and prosecutors have three years experience or less. So clearly, neither are they independent nor are they experienced. So in a sense, the government has used the judiciary as a political instrument to repress its opponents. The lawyers were acting on behalf of the Gulenist movement, an opposition movement in Turkey, the government has accused of organizing the so-called coup attempt of 2016. It's part of an ongoing crackdown against Gulenists, a so-called investigation into terrorism. The arrests took place very soon after the president said in a speech that lawyers deemed to have links with terrorist organizations could be disbarred. The list is very long. Uh, lawyers represent human rights activists, they represent journalists, they represent academics, members of civil society, women, students, activists. This is an authoritarian government that has no respect for human rights. And in order to maintain a strong grip on power, Erdogan finds that it's necessary to continually repress and crack down on dissent, as well as lawyers who represent those dissenters. International law is very clear. The United Nations basic principles on the role of lawyers states, lawyers shall not be identified with their clients' causes as a result of discharging their functions. This year is the 30th anniversary of the UN basic principles, and we strongly believe that the Turkish authorities should respect and enforce those basic principles.
The current bar associations have been a thorn in the flesh of the government for many years, and the government has openly expressed dissatisfaction with them. For example, in September 2019, 52 out of 80 bar associations boycotted a ceremony at the presidential palace to make to mark the opening of the judicial year. So the new law would greatly reduce the representation of lawyers in the main cities like Istanbul, uh, Ankara, Izmir, and so on. And it would disempower the existing bar associations in these larger cities, which have criticized the government's human rights record. The law would fundamentally violate the United Nations basic principles on the role of lawyers, which guarantees the right of lawyers to form and to maintain independent self-governing associations. We observe that such tribunals uh, play an important role as an alternative justice forum to allow victims to speak out, to draw international attention to their plight and put pressure on states to stop persecuting human rights defenders and respect human rights. So these tribunals are important because they can influence public opinion, the United Nations and other international bodies to take action. And in that sense, the because the persecution in Turkey is so ongoing and so uh, so ferocious, we believe that the Turkey Tribunal is an important forum to fight against this persecution.